This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And uh, well, I suppose in the classical sense of the word, it's not technically broken. It does post, it does turn on and boot into Windows, but it has a severe overheating problem. We've got another overheater in our hands, and uh, this time I'm not gonna beat around the bush. We're gonna try to jump straight into what I believe is the culprit. Are you ready? Stay with me. The Pixio PX277 Pro is a versatile 1440p gaming monitor with fast IPS technology baked in. It boasts a 165 hertz refresh rate and one millisecond gray to gray response time along with 450 nits of brightness and, I need to breathe here, a wide color gamut covering over 130% of sRGB. You'll also find creature comforts in the PX277 Pro like the integrated USB type C port you'll find for both 65 watt charging and display alt mode simultaneously. The KVM feature lets you control multiple devices with just a single keyboard and mouse, making switching between setups a breeze. And this is all just the start. There's so much to uncover with the Pixio PX277 Pro. If you're in search of an all-rounder with excellent colors and peripheral support for intense gaming, look no further, my friends. You can learn more by clicking the link below. Hey there, my name is Greg and this is Fix or Flop. Here we attempt to fix viewer systems that are broken in and around Orlando, Florida for free. We charge zero dollars and zero cents as long as they're okay with us taking on their systems for a few days and filming these processes. I can monetize these videos on sites like YouTube and I don't feel like offloading any of that cost to the owners who are already gracious enough to loan us their systems for a few days. Now the system here is pretty straightforward. You've got just a regular discrete graphics card with an AIO attached to the CPU. That's a 120 mil. It does have a push-pull setup and it's actually I just realized this is a it's got a he's pulling in air from the from the rear so it doesn't really make sense to me we've got three intake fans up front and I know that this case is a bit restrictive in terms of airflow but the fact that you've got three intakes up front means that you should probably switch this around to an exhaust setup that way you have a natural flow of air uh, whereas if you have air coming in from both sides of the case it's gonna have to rise and I, I, I guess that's fine, but you don't have a dust filter back here. There is a dust filter up front, so that's just asking for your radiator especially to get caked up uh, over the long term. So uh, just for the sake of cleanliness and hygiene overall, and, and we also would probably prefer to not have all this heat from the radiator get thrown into the case, we're going to switch this around later. Uh, and that's assuming that this AIO isn't dead, which it's possible, maybe even probable that it is. Uh, and if it's not dead, if the pump's not dead, then maybe it is clogged like one of our previous episodes. Uh, the cable management in this build looks decent. A few things up top I would like to clean up, but uh, otherwise it's a very balanced build. AMD platform looks like 16 gigs of DDR4, in a discrete graphics card down here and a uh, Wi-Fi card and that looks to be about it. So uh, yeah, nothing fancy going on here. And I, I like these because uh, again, they're predictable. So I'm going into this one expecting one of three things to be the culprit. Either the AIO block is improperly mounted, which is, is possible because if you use the wrong mounting gear, that can change mounting pressure, which affects thermal conductivity or, or conductivity across the two mediums, right? You have thermal paste in the middle to kind of help accelerate that because metals aren't perfectly smooth, uh, but you still have to have enough mounting pressure for that thermal paste to do its job. And so that's um, that's one of the things I've run into in the past that can cause temperatures to skyrocket. Uh, the next most obvious probably is a dead pump and we can check for that very quickly. Uh, and the third is a clogged loop. It's one of those three things, assuming his fans aren't dead, which that would be uh, to me a bit too obvious of an issue. Uh, and we could very easily remedy that as well. So one of those three, and I mean, it all comes down to really, yeah, I mean, just running a couple tests. This video honestly shouldn't take too long. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the troubleshooting process. Starting first with attempting to power this thing on. You guys know the routine by this point. We need to make sure that the symptom we see uh, is the same as what is described by the owner. If we're seeing something different, there's some sort of mismatch there. It's possible something else might have happened during transport, uh, or, or maybe we're just being lied to, right? I don't assume that's what's happening, but uh, you never know with folks. So we always have to do that bit of due diligence up front. Here we go. So we've got the system hooked up. I'm going to connect a keyboard just so that uh, I can hop into the BIOS right away. Again, I'm expecting it to turn on. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue according to what the owner has told me. Okay, bit of a delay there. No worries. And uh, let's try to get into this BIOS. Wow, okay, I'm not sure if you can hear that. And ooh. What? What is that? What is that? And why are we not getting picture? What's going on with that? I mean, we had a signal out at one point. OK. 
Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. And that sounds awful, by the way, coming from the radiator area. It almost sounds like something is snagging one of these fans because the pump, as far as I'm aware, is in the block. This is not one of those AIOs that has the, uh, the pump in the radiator. So let's try this again. I'm not gonna spam delete anymore. I just wanna see if we can get a post. Because again, that's gonna kind of, that's gonna kind of allow me to lock in where we're gonna spend most of our time here. So every, ooh, yeah, his pump is working. And there's a heck of a lot of fluid moving through here. Oh, there we go. Okay, that, that took a, a super long time. Uh, temperatures, that's what I wanna see. So CPU temps right now at 58 degrees Celsius. That is high for idle temps or otherwise idle temps in the BIOS. So this is looking like, yep, looking like a clogged AIO or an improperly seated AIO block. Those are the two things I'm gonna focus on. I'm gonna check the seating of the block first because that's something I could visually inspect through the top of the case. And you can see just a few more seconds of the system being on. Temperatures are now at 70 degrees Celsius. This is abnormal. If you see this, again, look toward your CPU cooler, especially if you're running an AIO. It's possible you have a dead pump or a clogged pump. Now I know this camera angle absolutely sucks for you guys, but from my vantage point, I can tell that the cold plate is wedged against the IHS. Now how firmly it's wedged, I mean, that's that's really the ultimate question here. Let's check the two screws that mount the entire block to the CPU. So that's these bad boys right here. There's one on top, one on the bottom. One thing I don't necessarily like about these AM4 mounts is that there's only two screws holding the entire cold plate against the chip. Uh, it'd be better, obviously, if you had four of these, one on each corner of the socket uh, so they get more well rounded mounting pressure. So let's check here. Oh wow, there's a whole lot of rotation left here. These have to be tightened down a lot, folks. Again, mounting pressure is crucial. I'm gonna check the bottom one. And okay, the bottom one actually is pretty tight. And just because I'm curious, hop back into the BIOS to check CPU idle temps and we're at 60 degrees Celsius, things are going back up. So we might have fixed uh, temperature issues to a very minor extent just by, again, twisting that top screw because it was definitely a lot looser than it needed to be. But that's clearly not the biggest issue here. Temps should not be this high in the BIOS, like at all. So uh, I'm gonna check the thermal paste application next. And if it looks good, I'm just gonna outright remove the AIO because obviously, I mean, something's not right here. Speaking of, there's one thing I want you to hear as well, and this, this has gotta be one of the worst sounds I've ever heard a computer make. And it comes from right here at the back of the radiator. I'm not sure if it's a fan clipping or if it's just like, well, it sounds like, like, yeah, that. It's strange, it, it almost sounds fluid-like because I mean, I'm pushing on this, right? If there was fan clipping, this little bit here, if there was no tolerance, you would hear the clipping again. I think it's inside the radiator. I think that's fluid moving finally when the pump turns on and it shouldn't make that sound, which tells me that there's probably something clogging it. That's just, that's my guess at this point. All right, so let's check thermal paste application and it looks pretty good, no complaints. Oh, I take that back, a bit of the, uh, the bottom right portion of the chip from your vantage point is missing thermal paste. And again, I think this is because it was improperly uh, mounted in terms of mounting pressure. The top wasn't screwed down a lot. So we just had a bunch of thermal paste being pushed upward, which is why it's all up here. But uh, not a lot of it was pushed back down because the top wasn't as tight as the bottom. So again, that's why it's important to you know tighten partially, then tighten partially. Match at the bottom, match at the top, and keep going that way. Don't over tighten just one side and call it a day, and then move on to the top. Especially if you're not going to be tightening the top as much as the bottom. So um, I know that sounds super complicated. Just just make sure that. Again, both screws are tightened evenly and firmly. This here obviously isn't optimal, but again, I don't expect it's the reason why temperatures are shooting up so high so fast. So even if we had fixed this, I think we'd still see 60, 70 degree idle temps uh, and climbing. Uh, so I'm gonna swap this out with an air tower cooler, one from Be Quiet that I think will be, um, in my opinion, personally, a bit of an upgrade, even though you know, radiator space isn't all that different between a 120 mil and a slim uh, tower cooler. And then I'm going to take apart the AIO because I think that I think there's something wrong with it. Yikes. We're also gonna tackle cable management while we're at it because it's it's freaking rough back here. So uh, again, we'll get the AIO out, we'll get the fans out, and uh, we'll swap that cooler over, make sure that temps are in check. We'll then uh, deconstruct the AIO, see if we see a similar issue that we saw with that MSI AIO from a previous fix or flop video, and then we'll fix this, because I just, it, it needs it. So let's get this thing out of here. It's gonna be a 
tad awkward. Am I missing a cable? Oh no, it was snagged. Alrighty, there we go. Oh, and would you look at that, folks? That is a radiator mounted pump. The pump is right in this little chamber here. And that would explain why we were hearing that weird, like water hammering sound. It's just uh, probably something grinding in the pump. Uh, but it's definitely on its way out the door and it's definitely a good thing that we're replacing it. Now we'll be swapping this AIO with something much more dependable in my opinion and that's the Dark Rock Slim from Be Quiet. This is an air tower cooler, not too large so it's most likely to fit any normal build out there unless you have some crazy like interference from a motherboard or whatnot. Uh, these smaller tower coolers are fairly universal and they come with very quiet fans as well for silent operation. You get a beautiful black ceramic construction, aluminum fin stack, copper heat pipes, a decent looking cold plate down at the bottom, and a pretty sweet top cover as well with the Be Quiet logo. You also get a 120 millimeter Silent Wings 3 fan with PWM support. These fans are among the quietest in the business. If you haven't heard one of these up close, well, I'm not surprised. They're virtually inaudible. If you're interested in picking up Dark Rock Slim, check it out via the link in this video's description. So we'll get this new mounting gear situated. Thermal paste applied. I like to do the X pattern. This came out a bit, uh, a bit juicy, so it's a bit more than I usually like, but more is not worse. We'll then get the cooler tightened down and the fan installed. Now at this point, I just want to check that idle temps are a lot lower. Uh, that should be a telltale sign that whatever we did fix the issue. I'm also expecting to not hear any grinding noises from the rear to be spamming delete so we can hop into the BIOS here. And we've definitely got to fix the fan curves. This exhaust fan is just pumping out air for, for really no reason. Uh, yeah, any any minute now, we'll get into the BIOS. I'm not sure why this system takes so long to post. But would you look at those sweet, sweet CPU temperatures. 36 degrees Celsius is much more tolerable. Motherboard temps were always fine, but uh, CPU core temps are significantly lower and they are not going up either like they were with the AIO installed. So uh, I think whatever we did, just swapping out the cooler outright, fix the issue clearly. Uh, now we need to turn our attention to the AIO itself, figure out what specifically was causing the overheating. I'm expecting again, some pretty disgusting coolant or a half dead pump. Yeah, and see for some reason, system fan one header is set to, <laughs> set to DC mode at 90%. So we're gonna swap that over to PWM. I'm gonna see. If I can move this down, should be a lot lower than this. Yep, way lower. Let's try like 40, 42, something like that. And then we can watch this RPM over here, this graph to the right, start to fall. Oh yeah, system is already a lot quieter. And I just confirmed the boot image is on the ADATA SSD. So not the hardest drive, that's a good thing. Now it's time to shift our attention to this AIO. I'm gonna start first with the pump chamber, which is located in the radiator, and then we'll move on to the block where I'd expect to see quite a bit of clogging in the fin stack, assuming, assuming that is the issue. Maybe it's just a dead pump, who knows? This thing's also kind of dirty. Let's see what we've got here, some torque screws. And just so you're aware, yes, I did see many of your comments asking me to refill the MSI AO that had really nasty coolant in it. Just wanted to see if we could revive it. Uh, that is definitely a possibility. I was just more concerned in the moment with getting that system up and running again. Uh, this here is gonna cause a bit of a mess, so uh, be prepared for that if you want to emulate what you're about to see. Um, yeah, that, that looks... A bit darker than it should. Ooh. I did have issues trying to get the color of this fluid on camera. Uh, now it, it doesn't have to be clear. Depending on the additives they include, it can change the color of the coolant in the loop. However, I don't think it's a coincidence that this coolant and the MSI coolant that was severely clogged in the earlier fixture flop video are both this nasty red color. Yeah, this is disgusting. That. That's a girl. And it doesn't, again, <laughs> it's the camera's not doing it justice. This stuff is like orange red. Um, it's yeah, basically like brown liquid. Really gross. And it also smells. So there's that. My table is pure white. It is a very neutral white. It's not warm. It's not cool, which is what I like about it. And you can see the coolant is just a very, very warm tone. Uh, and there's even bits of crap just kind of littered in here. Looks very similar again to the MSI AAO. So this is, uh, <laughs> it's almost like deja vu. Now we're gonna focus on the block side of this AIO, and this is where it becomes very detrimental to the cooling potential of the cooler when you have a bunch of tiny little fins that are designed to increase surface area and optimize fluid flow to pull that heat away from the CPU. When they're all clogged up by this gunk, uh, then you just ruin the efficiency of the cooler, the thermal efficiency of it. So 
Uh, yeah, I, again, I'm expecting to see just a bunch of nasty crap in here. And you can see a lot of fluid is already starting to pour out. Pretty gross again. And let's see, we'll pull this off. Let's have a look. At, oh, oh, this is disgusting. Look at that. Is the, is the camera picking up all this nasty crap? Do you see this stuff? It is so gross, and that is what kills these things. That's what makes them run so hot. I'm also wondering at this point if any of this buildup has to do with the pump's location. I, I find that a bit hard to believe, but at the same time, and we've had two in a row now where you get the same kind of nasty buildup, the same kind of red brownish fluid, and both pumps have been in the radiators. I, I don't really know what to make of that. I, you know, it's possible it's just a coincidence. We need way more, way more samples than what we have now. But, uh, th I mean, this, this shouldn't be in here. You know, it, it really shouldn't. And it's concerning because this is, this is really going to push folks away from AIOs, the fact that we keep seeing this over and over. And it's the exact same symptom that hasn't clearly been fixed from the factory yet. These fins are clogged. And, yeah, that is just, that's almost like sludge. That is disgusting. There is no fluid flow through these fins when this sludge is here, right? Now you see the problem. Even though the pump is working, and we checked that early on in this video, the pump is turning just fine, but it's 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 fighting against this buildup here. With this here, the fluid can't flow through the loop. It, it's it's not, you know, it's not circulating properly, and you just get it's just you know CPU temp skyrocketing because of this crap right here. No flow is no bueno, so we're gonna. Just douse this in some IPA. Then I'm gonna take my sim tray removal tool. And we're gonna scrape this gunk up. Oh, this is so gross. Yeah. You guys have seen some of the dirty PCs I've cleaned? This is grossing me out way more. It just looks awful. After scrubbing under hot water for a good while, you can see this is the result. It is a lot cleaner. There's no more clogging and there are a few scratches just because the copper oxidizes. So you see that contrast there. Uh, but to answer the question again, for those wondering if this is repairable, the answer is yes. So long as your pump wasn't undergoing just crazy amounts of stress due to the clogging, you should be able to refill this with either some kind of glycol solution or uh, distilled water add some biocide, add some corrosion inhibitors, what have you, and you should be good to go. I'm not too concerned at this point with repairing the AIO and replacing it. We've already got a, a very reliable uh, air tower cooler installed, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that yes, this is something you could remedy. Again, as long as your pump is okay, and we confirmed that this one was, we could feel the fluid churning, albeit with quite a bit of resistance, um, then it, this is totally correctable. The problem I have is that this shouldn't be something you have to do at home, especially after only maybe a year or so's worth of, of use. I mean, I would, I would expect to see this after maybe four or five years of an AIO running, you know, on and off every other day or so. But uh, this is, this is a lot of buildup in excess and it shouldn't be happening this quickly. And the fact that this is happening from another manufacturer's AIO, uh, granted a lot of these are just rebranded, but still a, a different brand selling a similar AIO with a similar problem, that's, that's a problem. Uh, and it's one that needs to be addressed at the manufacturing level. The fluid that's going in here is not good. And just to recap one more time, you can see a lot of this gunk didn't even make it into the channels. It got stuck here in the block housing. It's just all around disgusting. I mean, imagine if this stuff had gotten in there as well. I mean, you have no fluid flow at all. Your pump would kill itself because it'd be essentially forcing a bunch of fluid into a brick wall. It has nowhere to go. So that back pressure puts a lot of strain on the pump itself and that's what can kill it prematurely. So uh, yeah, this is, it's not good. The last thing on my agenda then is cable management. We're gonna give this thing some TLC, try to clean it up a bit, even though it doesn't really affect much of anything. It's just nice, you know, peace of mind knowing that things are clean back here in case you wanna add or remove components later on. So uh, give me a few seconds here. I'm gonna snap my fingers. Ah, that's, uh, that's better. Look, it's not my best work. And honestly, to get some of these runs to make sense, I'd have to completely disassemble and like everything back here and start fresh, start with the smallest cables and work your way to the very thick cables like the 24 pin there. But uh, I mean, it's cleaner than it was and the runs make a bit more sense. So again, it should be pretty straightforward adding, removing stuff in the future. So here we are again, system works. It uh, doesn't overheat anymore. So that's, that's always a plus, right? It's not overheating at idle. And I imagine those temps would also translate into uh, real world heavy use as well. This 180 watt TDP here for the Dark Rock Slim is I think plenty for the 3700X, unless you're doing some severe overclocking which I checked his BIOS settings. 
he's not doing that. So I uh, should be fine there. Graphics card was fine and we cleaned up cable management behind the motherboard tray. It's still just a bit shocking to me that this is the second time in what, a week or two that we run into the very disgusting clogged AIO situation. Uh, but of course, now that I know what to look out for, uh, it made this video go by much smoother. This process took only like three or four hours. Whereas before I was trying a bunch of different things because it just didn't really make sense to me that such a, a new, relatively speaking, AIO was, was clogged. But um, it almost was like a splitting image of the MSI AIO. I don't know what's going on. And I, I really hope that whatever, whatever QC issues were happening at the time these these fluids were added to these loops um you know i hope that that stuff was remedied and that modern aios the ones that are coming out now especially ones with like the screens and things uh don't have these issues in the short run uh, because these AIOs should last several years I mean, they're designed to if they if they didn't why would anyone buy them and they might like like you know look cool for a couple months but if you're gonna you know end up toasting your cpu after a year's worth of use which should not happen in the first place, why wouldn't you just buy an air cooler? So uh, we'll be keeping our eye open for this. If you or someone you know has had the same exact symptom as this viewer here, where the CPU is just super hot at idle, but you can feel the fluid is churning in the fluid in the, uh, the, the, the tubing, and you've checked that you've properly mounted the block, it's very likely that your AIO is clogged, and I want to get a hold of it if, uh, if, if that's something that, um, that you're open to. Um, I would totally pay for shipping and uh, I would just disassemble it here on the channel and uh, try to get a good list of, of what AIOs are doing this, um, document the color of the fluid, the type of build of, how nasty it was given its age, et cetera. I'd like to uh, just put together a little catalog for that and maybe give it out to the vendors, to the manufacturers moving forward to ensure this stuff doesn't happen again because it, it shouldn't and it's, um, it's just a shame because I don't want people to be afraid of AIOs. I mean, obviously there are a few extra failure points that these tower coolers, trust steel tower coolers, don't experience. Uh, that said, they are still plenty viable. They look really cool and uh, they can keep your CPU nice and nice and chill. So um, we'll see. But for now, another one bites the dust. Now with that and tying on to what I said earlier, if you or someone you know has a broken system in general, it doesn't have to be one that overheats, but just one that maybe uh, doesn't turn on or doesn't post, or you just have a black screen uh, where you should be having a picture out, be sure to send me an email if you live in and around Orlando, Florida. I would love to take a look at your system and attempt to fix it for free and create a video like this for us all to uh, to learn from and to be maybe kind of sort of entertained by. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, give this one a thumbs up. That would be appreciated. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. What are you doing? If you're not subscribed, smash that red button and click the bell notification icon so you get notified when videos like these go live. And leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this, uh, this mishap here and if you've at all experienced this with your AIO. My name is Greg. Thanks for fixing a system with me.